let's get into this whole TJ Dillashaw thing. I mean, we yeah. talked about it recently because TJ came out of the woodwork and said, oh, out of respect for the division, I'm relinquishing my belt. And I said then, and it made headlines, and I felt bad when I saw the headlines about TJ Dillashaw of what I said because it was like I was trying to, uh, I don't know, shit on him basically for want of a better word, and I wasn't, you know, but my honest opinion was that someone that fights for the belt, wins the belt, you know, of their own hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, wouldn't relinquish it just like that. And it turns right. out, you know, I was right. You know, generally where there's smoke, there's fire. And in this occasion, EPO, there's there's no accidental ingesting this. It, it, it is an injection only. It can't be found in steroids, uh, sorry, supplements that you could buy from a counter. There's no chance of any, any of this tainted supplement bullshit. He 100% has been caught red-handed taking performance-enhancing drugs, which gives you a massive benefit with EPO. It gives you a crazy, crazy cardio, apparently. This is what uh, Lance Armstrong was caught taking. And, um, yeah, if you see TJ Dillashaw, who is such a high-profile fighter, UFC fighter, the thing that stands out to me, it's like... It's a big problem. There's a bit. It's a bigger problem than I think we realize. I think more people are getting away with it than we think because, at the the highest level, if there's guys still doing it, I mean, there's just there's something about that. It seems like there's not really much. There's no rhyme or reason. You know, there's really nothing th- that makes it, it doesn't make any sense. I, and I think that we're gonna see this happen more and more. I, usually, you don't see champions get stripped because of testing for for performance enhancement drugs how often does that happen it's only happened a few times tim sylvia is one our good friend tim sylvia a oh, um, very very good friend hall of famer tim, tim sylvia yeah i i just don't understand it myself i mean to be honest you know if you're tj dillashaw you're the champion of the world he was close to being a two-way champion or maybe not that close but he had the opportunity um and to know you're going to get tested when you're the champion in the ufc you get tested more than if you're a prelim fighter. That's just the way it goes. And to risk it all, you know, to know that if you take an EPO, there's a two-year ban. Tarnish is your legacy. As Dan Hardy said on his podcast, as a martial artist and as a human being, you know, you got to, that's, that, that's, that he's never going to lose that. If he comes back after two years and continues to fight, you know, the court of public opinion, is not very forgiving and people are going to remember that, you know, and it's, it's a really, really bad look. Talk about a fall from grace. He was champion. He gets knocked out of Cejudo, refuses to take that loss and then now test positive. It's, you know, listen, I I, I don't want to, what's the word, kick a man while he's down too much because obviously no one regrets this more than TJ Dillashaw. But the fact of the matter is, you know, when you're cheating in combat sports, I I fail to have sympathy. I really do. That's the only time you should kick a man when he's down. I mean, you, you got caught. You know, not only that, you you take away. That's what I said about John Jones, and I stand by this. You take away the value of those guys that you're beating. You're 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 tarnishing their brand. You know, Daniel Cormier would be considered the best fighter in the world, hands down, undeniably. Be you know, two division undefeated. Holy shit! But he has those losses to John Jones. And you're taking away some some real some value that these guys could build up over time by putting those losses on the record, whether or not they lost to somebody who cheated. The problem, as you say, it's like, oh, the record's tarnished. No, the problem is I think MMA fans, they're almost a little bit too fair weather and they, they're a little bit too forgiving because guys get caught all the time and they come back and there's really no issue. They don't skip a beat. Um, TJ Dillashaw, two years a long time, but he'll come back. And he'll likely very quickly get right back into the mix. And if he wins, he'll get a title shot and everyone will go like, oh, yeah, that was then. Well, I don't think it's going to be that simple for TJ because there's a psychological issue when people take steroids. And and his coaches came out. I don't know if it's, it's his coaches, the training lab, somebody, a spokesperson for the training lab where he trains came out and give this very, very well-worded statement, you know, which uh, a bunch of fucking excuses, if I'm honest, uh, using a lot of fancy words that <laughs> just totally unnecessary, trying to sound overly posh and fancy. Yeah, I mean, here it is. Training lab have recently seen the defeat of one of our family members in recent months. The defeat is not due to the skills and combat savvy and opponent of flesh, but rather a defeat at the perilous hands of a far more sinister foe the demon of self-doubt, which haunts each and every one of us at one time or another in our lives. 
hold on a minute, you're already making excuses. The demon of self-doubt, which haunts everybody. Well, it, it, we're not all sticking fucking needles in our ass, pal. As a man of few words, when you don't sound like it, preferring passion and belief <laughs> as a shield to be carried out upon, I am bemused to care reckless and wreck uh, to bemused to careless and reckless dialogue for no other purpose than to make myself heard among the masses plagued by willful ignorance. However, there is an appropriate and even required time for the head of a family to speak out. This is such a time. And anyway, it goes on and on and on. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ, Ernest Hemingway, relax. I know that was, exactly that was, uh, what, that what was is beautiful. Going on. That was like a fucking poem. I mean, that should have been the beginning paragraph of a fucking book about honor and being a king. I don't know what that was. Was he for TJ Dillashaw or against him? I have no idea what that even meant. That was another language. Just, yeah, I know, I know. It's like old world English. Just, yes. Just go, just go to the uh, the end of that Harrington because there's another page. Let's just read the second page. And Twas, to this guy. It should have been a capital. Yes. It should have been like a big artistic capital letter to begin it. He has now what is that, Harry? Go, go to the full thing so I can see it, please, buddy. Uh, Trading Lab was built upon foundation of integrity, hard work, and most important, family. So in light of recent events, the Trading Lab and its affiliate would first like to thank USADA for upholding the standard of sterling athletic practices yeah. and offering tests to ensure the safety and fairness of competitive sports. That being said, we would also like to thank all those who have came forward at this time to show their genuine concern for all of our athletes especially T.J. Dillashaw, a fallen soldier on the battlefield of public expectation and demand for perfection. Wow, he's a victim. What? Holy he's shit. A the, what guy, he's a fallen soldier on the battlefield of public expectation and demand for perfection. Listen, he was... we as MMA fans are so out of line. We want them to be perfect. The battlefield of public expectation is too much to handle. We basically put the needle in his ass. He was actually not he right, was he was me too'd by life, to be honest with you. Me he too'd. He, he was he too. Although not right and inexcusable, TJ succumbed to the relentless pressure to win at any cost for the purposes of appeasing his employers, pleasing his fan base, and providing for his family. A sentiment that we can all relate to. Well, hold on. Listen, I, I, and I get this. And actually, in in essence, this is very nice of this guy to say that. But he's he's just making excuses. There he's not. No ex go sorry, go keep, keep. I don't want to cut you off. What were you going to say? No, I was, well, uh, Harrington's taken it away, so I can't really. Just bring it up one more time, Harrington, so I can reference what I was going to say. Because he says here the expectation from his employers. He's not There's wrong no in this in the sentiment that there's this expectation for perfection, but he sounds like a fucking woman. When women are pointing at Barbie dolls being like, that's not the way life needs to be. We can't be this. Like, shut the fuck up, okay? You make your bed and you lie in it, okay? Yes, there's an expectation of perfection, but the expectation is also to do it in a fair way. The expectation is just to do it clean. But look at this. TJ succumbed to the relentless pressure to win at any cost for the purposes of of appeasing his employers. So hold on, that's like, so the blame in the UFC there, or oh, TJ has to win, he has to win, pleasing his fan base. Well, listen, you please your fan base by going out there and fighting, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword, you know? And, and if you win, good things happen to you in the UFC. If you win, you go on a win streak, you get cut at the pay-per-view, the more you win, you become a big star, and you make more money. If you don't, the UFC, you know, they, they move on. You know, they, There's no pressure from the UFC to have to win. You know, so listen, it, it, it's a nice thing what they're doing here. I understand it. They're standing by their guy. I don't want to completely shit on these people. I don't know them. Maybe I do. They're probably very nice people. And I get it. They, they, they have a sense of loyalty to TJ. Thanks, Harrington. They have a sense of loyalty to TJ and they're, they're back in their guy. You know, I, and I understand that and I get that, you know, but I don't know. I, I kind of have an issue with that statement. The person I want to hear is TJ. That, yeah. That's who needs to be putting out a statement. He hasn't said anything yet. And I think, you know, he can handle this well if he handles it the mm -hmm. right way. If he comes out and he admits it, he apologizes, you know, but if he denies it and all this type of stuff, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this is Sam Cal Calavita. You said, Harrington? You could just chime in. It's all right. What, oh. are, you, what are you saying here? Uh, that was Sam Calavita. I don't know if you remember when he went on Joe Rogan, uh, I want to say like two years ago, uh, or I think right after the Cruz fight, he was saying he had worked with his new strength and conditioning coach, and he was now naturally getting down to a weight. 
<clears throat> sorry, where he thought he could make 125 consistently. It's the first time he started talking about this. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, very shortly after that, was calling him out on being on EPL. I mean, to me, it stands to reason that he might have been doing this since he started working with this oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and, 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 and this, so this is the guy you mean that put out this statement that's probably giving him the EPO. Allegedly, let's not get sued again. Wait, did we get sued? Ha no, ha no, Harrington, I'm asking you a question. No. So this guy that put out this statement here was the guy on the Joe Rogan podcast with him. Is that what you're saying? No, it was Dwayne Bang who was on him, but he was talking about the gains he'd found since switching to this guy as his strength and conditioning coach. And he specifically said in that interview, I can now hit 125 easily. And who was the the statement by? Sam Calavita. That was That's, the guy okay. who just made that statement. Got it. Okay. Ah. I'm saying this. If you're in TJ Dillashaw's camp, you fucking know that he's taking steroids. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, this is, as a fan, outside Bisping, shed some light on this. Do you think there's a guy on that high level, okay, do you think he could be blood doping without his camp knowing about it? The whole camp, yes. He could definitely be doing it without the whole camp knowing. But there's somebody... And it's and, and more than likely, and, and again, I really apologize if, if I'm way off here, but generally that type of stuff comes from the strength and conditioning guys because that's their world. The martial artists, the boxing coaches, they're not pushing that type of shit. That's not their field. Jiu-jitsu guys, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that boxers or jiu-jitsu guys or whatever won't do that, but that's not their thing. But performance enhancement generally comes from the performance coaches because that's their thing. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? That's what they're trying to it's achieve. In the, it's in the fucking uh, job description to enhance it's, my performance. That's why I'm paying you, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, somebody knew. Somebody knew. And, and it's a shame, you know. Me and TJ are both part of Team Sanibal. Uh, and I, I like TJ. He, he's a decent guy. But, uh, you know, I, I still I, I can't have any sympathy. You know, I mean, I suffered badly at the hands of performance enhancing drugs, and many people have. You know, we're not trying to, I say it all the time, we're not putting balls in a basket here. We're trying to do damage to our opponents, and there's no honor in cheating like that. There really fucking isn't, you know? It's so. very, it's it's crazy. And now this is an interesting uh, thing. John Kavanaugh, who is Conor McGregor's head coach? Yeah, um, coach. Yeah, he had a really interesting tweet. Pull that tweet up, Harrington, because I don't want to misquote him on it. And you could even read it if you want. Um, this is an interesting thing. I wonder how you feel about this, Ms. Bisping. Just an idea. Yeah, he says, um, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, just an idea. If it's a two-year ban forward, then also make it a two-year ban previous. And he wins in that period overturned and win bonuses given to opponents. This is how you disincentivize cheats. Remove the rewards fully. Can you just say yeah. the word uh, disincentivize as well? Uh, yeah, 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 again? yeah. No, I, no. I was going to go and say it. Say Did it. I do that wrong? Disincentivize? Just say it. Disincentivize. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You did it. Did I? Disincentivize. <laughs> Zippy zippy eyes. <laughs> um, okay, so, I mean, listen, I like that. That's a really good idea. It's very, very strong. But the problem is, I mean, yeah, that would disincentivize. Um, People from cheating. <laughs> but I just, for the life of me, can't believe that anyone would cheat. As I was going to say before, when you're the champion, you know you're going to get tested. You're going to have some brass balls on you to still be doing that. Knowing you saw that, are going to come and knock on your door. But the thing is, if, if I remember rightly from somebody that was telling me about this, that knows a lot about this, Circle of Trust Time can't divulge any names, but somebody that knows about this shit, uh, he said it has a very, very short detection window. So you think, you, you know, a few hours and you saw to have it been, it might be out of your system. But anyway, you're going to be crazy to do that. But if you do what John Kavanaugh says, and you go back two years, right? I mean, that now you're going to start changing records, somebody that you might have beat. You're going to make it. Pull up no TJ's content. record. You're going to maybe bring, uh, give back win bonuses. You know, it, it creates a whole mind. It's a big it's fucking really, really mess. Difficult. But then I will tell you right now, you're making a mess for that many more people that are in charge that are powerful. You will not make that mess for very long because it would also, uh, it would also in incentivize the UFC to really fucking get rid of their cheats. They would do if they had to create that much more bullshit paperwork and lawsuits and all this other shit, go back two years. What is, uh, the pet? What's, what is, what's two years ago? Let's see. 2016, uh, 17. 2017, December 30th. So, yeah. So, Dominic yeah. Cruz. 
a Sun Sao, Lineker, and two wins over Garbrandt. Let's say. So if he had to give back his win bonuses for all of them and maybe his performance bonuses for all of them, we could be talking, you know, you're talking easily hundreds of thousands of dollars. If not millions. I mean, that's, if not, and that's going to really sting. Imagine that. Imagine that. So it, it's a good idea from John, John Kavanaugh, uh, but it's 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 just really, it's too hard to enforce. But I do like it. I, I like the sentiment. I like where he's going with it. Well, what they can also do um, is, this is how they can do something like that, because they do impose fines already. So the Nevada State Athletic Commission can impose a fine. USADA can impose a fine. But to actually give make the fine much larger, always make the fine way bigger, because you fuck with people's money. That's it. I'm telling you right now, this is why everyone's even doing this at this point. At the highest level, well, at this point, there's a business. People are fucking trying to make some cash. Um, and then you could retroactively pay those guys their win bonuses. But it would have to be based off of you, – it's not like the UFC would take the money and give it to that guy. It would have to be some sort of thing done through the commission or whatever. And they do it already, except instead of lining the pockets of the commission or the government, why not give it to the fucking fighters who gave up their record and career and who knows the trajectory that they would be on had they won that fight. They won that title fight. Imagine that, dude. John Lineker, he's the champion now. What a different life oh, no, he has. It, it, different world. No, Everything I, is different. Absolutely. I mean, I was robbed of numerous title fights. Chael Sonnen was definitely on steroids. Vito Belfort, there's no question about it. You know, and they were all number one contender matchups. So, uh, so yeah, no, I definitely hear what you're saying, you know. I mean, uh, I just still don't understand in this day and age how people are still doing it, you know. If you if if that's if that's the level of your own confidence, then go do a different sport. Don't do this. If you have to, it's a psychological thing. A guy that I knew, uh, I won't say his name, that I used to train with, he did them all the time. Tim he was in the gym, and it, there you go. And he was a uh, he was a beast in the gym. And I remember I introduced him to Dana, and I said, "This is going to be your next heavyweight champion." Believe me. But then he got in. He got signed to the UFC, and he came with all the steroids, right? And he was. He was like a little pussy cat, and I was training with him uh, for, for the fight in like the hotel in the training room, and he was just awful, and he had no confidence. He just went out the window, but then he got out of the UFC and he went back on the gear again, and all of a sudden he became this monster. Now, of course, it made him strong, but it was it was this. It was a, they get a psychological dependence on it, and it's really interesting that Cody Garbrandt was saying all this time ago that he was on EPO. Looks like there was something there. So, yeah, you know, definitely not a coincidence. And I, look, I can understand it. You have a different thing in you. You become a UFC champion. You've done it clean. If you are, you spend your entire life learning martial arts, you spend 10, 15 years of studying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, kickboxing, Muay Thai, you finally get your shot to be in the UFC. Um, and you're starting to realize that you're not good enough. There are guys that are kicking your ass that shouldn't be kicking your ass. You know, you go, you have to make a choice. All right, well, I could either take this chance and play this game and roll the dice and try to get as far as I can get and make as much money as possible, or I can just fizzle out now. And that's what's going to happen. And in their mind, they're like, yeah. I'm either going to fit. It's almost like you're gambling. And you're like, all right, well, either I get caught or I lose. What's worse? I was never going to get there. So I understand it. I cheat at Monopoly every time I play. Don't play Monopoly with me. It's over. And there's nothing yeah. on the line. Listen, I get it. I get it, you know, and it is very tempting because the rewards are great. And for guys like us, this means the world to us. Nothing, you know, you know of, of course, outside of family, wife, children, stuff like that. But put all that to one side. Nothing else in an MMA fighter's life matters more than their fight career. They love it. They're passionate about it. It's a painful thing to do. It, it's, it's not an easy sport to be a part of. So you have to love it if you're willing to go through these sacrifices and you want to do as well as possible. So I get it. And TJ is not a bad person. I mean, I don't know him that well, but I know him reasonably well. Um, I mean, I, I, again, you know, from an arm's distance type thing, you know what I mean? I know I talked to him and this and that, and I know some of his friends. I don't think he's a bad person. He's a good person. And to a certain degree, the person that wrote that statement is kind of right, but he just succumbed to the pressure, you know? But you're not allowed to do that. I do understand and I sympathize, and he's not a bad person, but still, it's not an excuse, and it's certainly not a reason why he should be going out there cheating. Yeah, I completely agree. It's uh, He's not wrong in the sentiment, but you're talking about the same... Facts of life for every person who is a mixed martial artist. They all have the pressure yeah. to the win. They all have the pressure to compete at the highest level. Everyone is trying to get there. That is in the UFC and, and beyond that, even in the smaller leagues, all of those guys, they have to win. In fact, those guys, 
in a weird way might even have more pressure because they ha- they're not there yet. It's like watching college basketball players versus guys that are right in the NBA. These guys are trying to get there, and you know a loss is devastating to a, a young fighter early in the career. So. Um, everyone's got that struggle and you could take it further and everyone has that struggle in life. Everyone's got issues. Everyone would, it would be easy to walk into a bank with a mask on and a, a, a toy gun and say, give me the, all the money. And then my bills are paid for the next few months, but there's rules against it. If I get caught, I have to go to jail and guess what? It doesn't matter that I've had a hard life and that my fucking nobody handed me anything and I don't have parents to go home to. It is what it is. Absolutely. And that's a really good comparison because that's kind of what it's like. You know, you cheat in MMA, you know, you, you roll the dice, you're doing that. It's the same thing in life, as you said. I mean, back in the day, I mean, you can't really go to banks and rob them these days. But in like the 40s and 50s, whatever, you used to hear about that thing a lot more. You walk in with a gun and the decision's there. Anyone could make that decision, certainly back then, and probably maybe get away with it. You never know. Maybe I would have been a bit of bank robber if I was born a generation earlier. Or TJ Dillashaw definitely would have been. But, you know, it's the same thing. You can choose to go and do that and steal that, or you can choose to go and steal the victory or cheat in life, you know, and there's pressures to everybody. And certainly in mixed martial arts and combat sports and boxing, people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Generally, people that fight for a living, they do it because you know, that was the path that they were always going to go down. You know, everybody, Mick Maynard from the UFC, the matchmaker, and I shouldn't really quote him here, but it's nothing bad. But he said, everybody on the roster, when you talk to them, he said, there's something, there's something up with everybody. You know what I mean? Because it takes a certain special somebody for a living to step into a cage and fight somebody else. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Almost to the death. Of course, it's not to the death, but you're trying to knock them out or submit them. You know, and he said all of them, the, the, there's issues with every single person on the roster. He didn't, wasn't saying it in a negative way. We were having a laugh about it over a beer, you know. So, but 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 he, he, I understand that. He's kind of got a point, you know. But everyone's like that. So you can't cheat. You've got to go ahead. You've got to work your ass off. Because if I won and I knew I was cheating, I, I wouldn't be happy with that. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and be like, you know, I deserve to win that. I deserve that belt around my waist. But uh, but there you go. Let's not spend the entire episode shitting all over TJ Dillashaw. He's obviously going through a tough time right now. As I say, he's not a bad person. He fucked up here royally. He's paying the price. He's been caught. He's suspended. He's getting fined $10,000. And, uh, you know, I hope he learns his lesson and comes back from it. You know, and I'm 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 trying to be nice and fair there. Yeah, as I say, he's not a bad person. But yeah, I don't think so either. That is that right. that is the the most important thing. Like, yeah, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. You could fuck up, and that's what he did. He fucked up. But um, if we're gonna criticize things in MMA, this this is one of the only things you could sort of with a clear conscience uh, criticize. Um, has there been anything put in place as to what they're going to do for the title, Harrington? Do you know? Uh, it looks like, uh, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, it's going to be Marlon Moraes versus uh, Henry Cejudo for the inner, or for I guess the now vacant title. Mm. Mm, interesting. So uh, possibly another champ, champ, if uh, Cejudo wins. But Sergio Moraes, Mar- he's looking good right now. But anyway, we won't talk about that. All right, Mike. Really quick, uh, before we get into these fights, um, BetDSI obviously is the place to go if you want to gamble on fights. It's been a business forever. They're they're, not, they're ranked high on all these sport betting review sites and it's one of the names you've heard in in sports betting for a very very long time so you know they're trusted the best thing about them is they have 24 7 customer service when people are taking my money i want to be able to speak to somebody on the phone and not deal with you know getting the runaround and bet dsi has a great reputation for great customer service um fights this weekend are huge mr bisping where are you throwing your money we got a main event obviously we're going to break these down a little bit more um but we have some amazing deals and and if if that's the highest place to do it so what do do you think on this main event poirier or holloway yeah well i'm I'm gonna say the co-main event because i'm more confident in that and obviously people part ways with a hard-earned money i want to give good advice and i i think gasoline is going to do it and i say that with respect so go to betdsi.com and put some money on kelvin gasoline to win he's actually a really big underdog i'm not sure what the odds are plus 155 he's a plus 155 underdog yeah, of course. So if you put 100 bucks on him, you'll get 155 back. Plus, with our, our promo code BYM120, uh, you get what, what do you get? You get a 60% bonus cash match. So that 100 will be $160. So if you go to betdesign.com, use the promo code BYM120, 60% extra on that, and uh, you're way more invested in it. And I honestly, I'm telling you, I've got a feeling Kelvin's going to do it. Uh, so go out there, put some money on it, have a little flutter, go to betdesign.com. 
Use the promo code BYM120 so they know that we sent you. So that does a, us a big favor. Thank you very much. And you'll enjoy the fight more. And I think you'll make some money. You will win some money, but explain the uh, the bonus real fast. Yeah, if you guys opt in for any of the bonuses, just know that there's a ro- some rollover requirements, meaning that if you use the bonus, you have to gamble a certain amount of times before you can take that bonus money out. If you guys just want to try it one time, don't use that bonus money. Still use the the uh, the promo code BYM120, but just don't opt in for that bonus, and you can take your money out right away.